Having a hypersensitivity means that someone's immune system has reacted to something in such a way that it ends up damaging them as opposed to protecting them. There are four different types of hypersensitivities, and in the fourth type, or type 4, the reactions are caused by T lymphocytes, or T cells. And so type 4 is also sometimes known as T cell mediated hypersensitivity. T cells are called T cells because they mature in the thymus. And the two types of T cells that cause damage to tissues in type 4 hypersensitivity are CD8 positive cells, also known as killer T cells, or cytotoxic T cells, as well as CD4 positive T cells, also known as helper T cells. CD8 positive killer T cells do exactly what their name implies. They kill things. They're these silent assassins of the immune system that go after very specific targets. In contrast, CD4 positive T cells locally release cytokines, which are small proteins that can stimulate or inhibit other cells. So CD4 positive T cells act like little army generals coordinating immune cells around them. But both CD8 positive and CD4 positive cells start off as naive T cells because their T cell receptor or TCR hasn't yet bound to their target antigen, which is that specific molecule that it can bind to. All right, so let's play out a scenario. Let's say someone's skin brushes up against some poison ivy. They'll get this molecule called urushal all over. That molecule is small enough to quickly make its way through the epidermis to the dermis, which is where it might combine with small proteins, and then it might get picked up by a Langerhans cell, also known as a dendritic cell, which is a type of antigen-presenting immune cell. The dendritic cell then takes it to the nearest lymph node, the draining lymph node, where it presents the antigen on its surface using an MHC class II molecule which is basically a serving platter for CD4 positive T cells to come check out. If a T helper cell recognizes the antigen, it binds to the MHC class II molecule using its T cell receptor, as well as CD4, which is a co-receptor, and this is why it's called a CD4 positive T cell. At this point, the CD4 positive or helper T cell will also express a CD28 protein, which will bind to the B7 protein on the surface of the dendritic cell. Once it binds to the T-cell receptor in the CD28 protein, the dendritic cell releases interleukin-12, a cytokine that tells the naive CD4-positive T-cell to mature and differentiate into a type 1 helper T-cell, or a Th1 cell, a sort of coming-of-age moment. At this point, the CD4-positive T-cell is no longer considered naive. Instead, it's an effector cell that's able to release the cytokine interleukin-2, which helps both it and other T-cells in the area proliferate as well as interferon gamma, which activates phagocytes like macrophages and creates more Th1 mm. cells. Those activated macrophages release pro-inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor, interleukin-1, and interleukin-6, which causes leakiness in the endothelial barriers and allows more immune cells into the area, all of which leads to local swelling or edema, redness, and warmth, as well as systemic symptoms like a fever. Activated macrophages will also secrete lysosomal enzymes, complement components, and reactive oxygen species into the exposed area, which damage tissue. In the case of poison ivy, since this is all going on in the skin, it's called dermatitis, inflammation of the skin. This kind of contact dermatitis rash doesn't only happen from poison ivy, though. It can also happen in some people in response to wearing nickel, which is often found in earrings and necklaces. And another classic example is a tuberculin skin test, sometimes called a PPD, which is where a protein from the bacteria Mycobacterium tuberculosis is injected into the skin. If that person's been exposed to TB previously, they'll develop a type 4 reaction, where TB-specific Th1 cells will migrate to the injection site and create an inflammatory response that results in the skin getting thick or hard, called induration. A type 4 hypersensitivity is also sometimes referred to as a delayed type hypersensitivity, since it usually takes about 48 to 72 hours to recruit Th1 cells to the site of exposure. So these skin reactions usually appear over that time window. Apart from skin-related reactions though, type 4 hypersensitivity is also involved in several systemic diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, where Th1 cells cause inflammation in the joints, multiple sclerosis, where Th1 cells damage myelin around nerve fibers, and inflammatory bowel disease, where Th1 cells cause inflammation in the lining of the intestine. In addition to Th1 cells, a naive T helper cell might differentiate into Th17 cells, which is just another subclass of T helper cells. 
These Th17 cells develop in response to dendritic cells secreting slightly different cytokines, interleukin-6 and transforming growth factor beta. When that happens, the resulting Th17 cells are formed, and they produce interleukin-17, which is particularly important to recruiting neutrophils. Alright, so that was helper T-cells, or CD4-positive T-cells. But remember that in type 4 hypersensitivity, damage to tissue can also be caused by killer T-cells, aka cytotoxic T-cells, aka CD8-positive T-cells. And these destroy cells directly. CD8-positive T-cells target antigens when they're presented on MHC class 1 molecules, which are present on all nucleated cells in the body, meaning every cell is a potential victim for a CD8-positive T-cell. MHC class 1 molecules present antigens from inside the cell, so this process is important for when cells become infected with viruses or when they're mutated, like with cancer. If this were to happen, then an effector cytotoxic T cell specific to that antigen would use its T cell receptor to bind to the MHC class 1 molecule, which would cause it to release its payload of perforin and granzymes. Perforin would perforate the target cell by forming pores, and these pores would allow the granzymes to enter the cell. Once inside, the granzymes induce apoptosis, or programmed cell death. Diseases where this cytotoxic mechanism is involved include tissue destruction in type 1 diabetes mellitus, where CD8-positive T-cells attack pancreas islet cells, as well as Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where CD8-positive T-cells attack thyroid epithelial cells. So as a quick recap, type 4 hypersensitivity leads to inflammation and tissue damage via T-cells which can be either CD4-positive T helper cells, which help coordinate the attack, or CD8-positive killer or cytotoxic T cells, which directly do the attacking. Thanks for watching. You can help support us by donating on Patreon, or subscribing to our channel, or telling your friends about us on social media.